Hello there guys, welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to show you some basics of modeling in Houdini. This is going to be like a precursor video before we get into procedural modeling and creating digital assets. So let's get started. So what I want to show you in this particular video is how to go about creating this rectangular top table with four legs. We are just going to go ahead and create a simple model which is not procedural yet but we are going to make it in such a way that it can be converted into a procedural model and then into a digital asset at the next stage. So let's go into Houdini and start. So here now within Houdini I'm directly going to go ahead and start modeling out my table itself. I recommend you just follow along for now till you get a hands-on approach on to understanding how modeling works here. So to create the table I'm going to start by creating a grid object and I'll rename this grid object to be the table. Now once I created this object I can just double click on this to dive into it and here I have several options on the grid node which tell me exactly how I want to create this grid. So if you want to ever understand all of the different options which are available on any of the nodes I'm creating because I don't really want to go into each and every single nodes details you can click on the help icon here on any one of the nodes and this opens up the help documentation which tells you all of the different options available in that particular nodes and exactly what they are used for. So now I'll just go ahead and start changing a couple of options here and uh, let me change the number of rows and columns so I just have a simple grid. Now what I want to do is I don't want the table to have a flat top like this I actually want the tabletop to have a certain amount of thickness and to get that I can make use of the extrude option. So to get the extrude option there are several ways let me just go ahead into my polygon tab here at the top and here you should be able to see that extrude is the first option and because I'm modeling I can easily go ahead and start making use of any one of these options. So to make sure I'm uh, working with the proper object here I want to make sure I have selected primitives which are nothing but the faces. Make sure the top primitive is selected which means it has a yellow outline and now also you can see there is a slight pink arrow on one side. We'll see exactly what the use of that arrow is later. I'll click on poly extrude and this gives me a special kind of handle. I'm going to use a blue handle in the center and move and this gives me thickness for the table itself. So you can see also that after the grid object a poly extrude node has been dropped in which only y axis has certain amount of distance applied. So I'll just set in a proper value for that. Now after this the next thing I want to look at is a couple of options on the extrude node itself. Because I've just moved the top of the object the bottom of the object has been removed by the node as a default. It is the way the node works. So you have a certain amount of quirks for every node the way the options are set so you'll have to work with every single one of them to understand these quirks. So now to get this back face again I can go under the options for extrude tool. Here you can see there are different options. So here I can tell whether or not I want the side output, if I want the front output or if I want the back output. Depending on your use for the extrude node you can use any one of them. Now once I've done all of this also the another option I want to make use of for now which we'll see use for later is turn on output groups. Once I've gone ahead and created the top of the table I want to create my table legs. To create these legs I'm again going to make use of another grid. So let's go ahead and open up a new grid. I'll press tab. I'll type in grid and you can see a new grid is available. I'll just place it somewhere here. First thing I want to do is make sure this grid is very small. So I'll just go ahead change its size from 10 to let's say 1 and also I don't really need as many columns and rows. So let's go back reduce them to 2. Now once that I have this um, cross section of the table I actually want this to have a certain amount of height. Again I'm going to use a poly extrude. I'll click on this and I have to make sure my polygon face is selected or else you, as you can see it just throws an error does nothing. I'll go push this object down so it goes downwards and I can also just inset it a little bit inside so that it has a slight tapering to it. Now as you can see I have my grid object and I have my poly extrude created. But now because both of these look pretty much the same I can't really tell looking at it in the node editor itself or the network view itself what these objects are for. So I'll just go ahead and rename them. This is going to be the tabletop base. So, so I'm going to call it top base and this is going to be the legs 
So there's a single leg, so I've just added that. Here, there's going to be the table thickness. So once you know exactly what these icons on the notes stand for, you don't need to really tell it's an extrude which is giving the thickness. So I'm just gonna use the same thing. I'm gonna call this the height and taper because it's doing both the operations in here. So to duplicate the leg onto all the different four corners of my actual table top, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm gonna use a copy node to do the duplication. So let's go ahead, type tab and bring in a copy node. As you can see, this copy node has two inputs. To know what the operation for each input is, you can middle click on them and it tells you exactly what it is very quickly. You don't actually have to go to the help documentation for them. So here, the first input is for the primitive we want copied and the second one is to where you want it copied. So what I actually want done is take the legs, which are my primitives which I want copied, onto every single corner of my table base. As you can see, if I come to my table base, I have these points on all four corners and the copy shop basically makes use of these points to copy the object to every single one. So all I need to do is connect my leg to my table, but not the extruded table, I'll tell you why in a second, but the original table base which we had. If I enable my copy node now, this is what we have. We have the table legs, but for some reason, they go to the side. The reason for that is if we come to the copy node itself, it's making use of the point attributes where it's looking for normals and up vectors and such. You can just disable that and now my legs are aligned the right way. Now, the reason I connected the top base to my copy node rather than the thickness node is because if I connect the thickness node, remember the thickness node actually has additional points, top and bottom, which are uh, giving me the thickness of the entire table itself. So if I actually go ahead and connect this one and come back to my copy, you can see that my object is now duplicated twice at every single corner. So there are two legs coming in there. I hope you're able to see that. Let me go to wireframe. You can see there are two legs coming in and if I connect only the top base, you can see there's only one leg coming at the bottom. So that is exactly what I wanted. I wanted my object to be easily only there at the bottom alone. Now, the problem here is when you're in the uh, geometry node, when you're inside the geometry node working with shapes, you can see that you can only have one object visible at any given time. This is actually pretty useful, but I, like at this time where I actually have the table uh, legs created here and the table with the thickness created here, I want both of these merged together. I don't actually want them separate. So we can't actually have the display flag turned on for both of them at the same time. So instead what we need to do is use a merge node so I'll type tab, merge, I'll bring in a merge node. And this merge node is a, so it has a special input. You can see it has three arrows at the top. What this means is that you can almost connect as many networks as you want in here and it'll merge all of them together. So I'll just go ahead, connect the copy node into the merge and then take the thickness node and connect that into my merge. If I enable the display flag on merge now, because both of these streams are, have been merged, I can see both of these objects at the same time. But there, as you can see, there is a certain issue here. Uh, because my points are here at the center, that is the center it used to duplicate these legs. That means the legs are kind of offset and they're not actually uh, sitting inside my table itself. So to correct this problem, what I can do is I'll select my table thickness object which I have here. So let me go ahead and turn on the display flag for that. I can go here, select any face I want and now if I select polygon extrude, you can see we can actually just extrude one individual face. But as we remember here at the top when I actually added this thickness, I actually went ahead to the group section and created something called the output group. What this does is create groups for every individual face we have in the entire object. So here we have a group for the front, the back and the sides. What that means is if I use the group called the extrude front, it is going to select the top face, the back is going to select the bottom face and sides is all the side faces which are available. All I want this particular extrude to do is not just pull out this particular face but all of the faces on the sides. So for this I can just go ahead to the top here where it tells group 2. I'll disable that. If I enter you can see all of the faces in the entire object are extruded. I can just go use a drop down menu 
And here, um, I know this is kind of cut off screen, but it has all of the options for different groups we have. I'm just selecting the extrude side group. So you can see extrude side is the one I selected. Now all of these primitives are being extruded off onto the side. Only thing is, I want these to be extruded off, but using their normals, not their individual faces. So for that, I can tell key points shared using normals. That just goes ahead and creates this kind of thickness for me, where I just got some extra additional width onto my table. Now, once I've done this, because this is the one which is going into the merge node, if I enable the merge node this time, you can see my legs are now actually inside the table object itself. Now I have my pretty much the entire table. Obviously, let's say the legs kind of look a little bit too thick for the size of our table. So if we want to ever change that, we can just go back to the leg object, the original object where we created the leg itself and change the operation to change the size on that and you can easily see the entire set of legs change immediately. So pretty much that's it. This was a simple intro on how to go about modeling in Houdini. I just wanted to show you how to use these nodes. In the next video, we are going to go ahead with creating a procedural way of changing different attributes of this particular table so that you can change the height, width, length, but still not have to worry about creating all of these nodes every single time. So I'll see you in the next video with additional details. In the meantime, after watching this video, if you have any critics, suggestions, comments, doubts, or whatever else it is, Please remember, you can always put them in the comment section and do whatever I can to help you guys. So that's it for now. I hope to see you guys in the next video.